So you wanna do a custom loop in the NR200. Though there's a few limitations, let's get some vital stats on this case and take a look at a few considerations to help you plan out your build. And yep, I will show you how to put that top rad in as well. Hey, and welcome back to Machines and More. This is a project I have put off for way too long since we've been having too much fun with AIO configurations and air cooling configurations. But from the outset, this was always going to be a topic of coverage for this case. So I thought I would share some info as I'm planning out, prepping and modding the case. I will be doing the demo build shortly, but most likely with an older GPU block first but I at least wanted to get you guys the vital info first and some part recommendations, especially since I know a lot of folks like me will be doing builds over the holidays when there's a bit more free time. I've done the necessary mods for this case already, so the actual build part is coming soon. To be fair, air cooling when properly configured in this case is already really, really good. And the big reason to do this is simply for the entertainment value, for looks and for fun. Performance wise, of course, there is an argument for better noise, thermals, or higher boost clocks as well. So here's what I think you'll need to know. First, the basics. The case will officially support up to a 240 millimeter radiator at the bottom and up to a 280 on the side. The bottom rat is the easiest one to fit. You have about 75 millimeters of clearance below the top of the first slot, so you can either go extra slim rad like an XSPC TX240 like I have here, with 25 millimeter fans or a sub 30 millimeter radiator and thin fans. For the best airflow, the TX240 plus slim fans will get you the most room. And how much clearance you will have depends on your choice of GPU block, which will typically take up about 20 millimeters of thickness. Here a TX240 plus NFA12 gets to over 48 millimeters. For side mounted radiators, things do get a little bit tricky because of pump mounting. There's very little clearance to mount the typical pump res in any sensible location. There's no room between the PSU and the radiator plus the fans. The space between the motherboard's rear I.O. and the radiator is too small to mount a typical pump res as well. So your best bet is to use something like the SwiftTech Apogee Drive 2 block, which uses an integrated DDC pump or any block which places the pump in the CPU block. So I know Barrow makes one, AlphaCool has a few options like the DCLT, but that 2600 pump used in those are, are weaker. I would only use those for a CPU only loop. Dual rad plus GPU block is gonna be tough with that pump. Also, running a side mounted rad, at least for me, takes away most of the fun here since being able to see the build, it's hugely satisfying, especially for how much effort and planning goes into it. If you're just going with a single bottom radiator, that's fine too. Just realize that you are quite limited uh, thermally. A cylindrical pump res like the EK Kinetic fits horizontally into the stock holes. To turn it vertically requires the bracket, but that doesn't fit nicely. You will have to drill the case, and from what I can tell, you'll get three screws in to that bracket at most. What I think really looks good with the way these cases are laid out and shaped is one of the Corsair Hydro X XD3s, which is a Xylem DDC pump res in a squarish looking form factor. It's actually not that small, but it absolutely looks great, fits well, and belongs in this case. The PSU shroud will have to be modded to fit it, but that will be one of the easier mods I'll discuss today. So we've discussed the limitations of the side mounted radiator and performance wise, you're better off with straight air cooling everything than running everything on a 240 millimeter radiator. So where else to turn but top mounted radiators? I'll lead into this discussion by stating that if you wanna try this, you absolutely need an ultra thin radiator on top to make this reasonable. The easiest way to mount a radiator on the top is to take off the mesh on the top of the case and then use your radiator screws through the holes. Now, putting the mesh back is a little bit trickier and you could end up with creases in your mesh, but for the most part, it's fine. But the problem with the radiator being mounted this way is that it's centered on the panel and your motherboard will mostly, most likely interfere with the fans. This would be those latches for your RAM that does most of the offending. So 
Unfortunately, you're not going to get a fan on the motherboard side of the case if you go that this route. Plus, it's going to be a pain to clean the radiator and the dust filter since you can't just take it off anymore, especially when the loop is hooked up. There's one more consideration with fans and that top, top mounted radiator, and that's the power supply location. With an SFX power supply, even if you could get a radiator up there, it's not going to be easy to fit a fan in that spot since the top of the power cable will hit the fan. Now, based on my measurements, you have about 10 millimeters, about a centimeter of clearance to shift it down, but you do have to be careful with your cable management underneath the PSU if you go this route. So let's go to the shop. <laughs> I'll walk you through some of the steps I took to get this to work. Now, you won't need any super exotic tools, but at a minimum, I would recommend a 632 tap and the appropriate drill bit. If you have a typical Imperial set, a 332nd inch bit is too small and an eighth of an inch bit is too big. So what you need is called a number 36 drill bit, which is about 0.1 inches. At a high level, what I decided to do was drill uh, and mount the top rad panel at the top of the case and then grind off enough material from that top panel to make it still fit with a rad panel underneath. We're just gonna be using the stock radiator panel that Cooler Master provides. A good drill bit and a Dremel tool, some files, and you're good to go. But definitely use eye and breathing protection since you will be grinding away metal here. Now mounting with the rad panel gives us two main advantages. One is we need to bring that radiator as close to the side as possible in order to clear the ram latches and other motherboard components. Also, we can put the radiator wherever we like in terms of the fore aft position as well. I'm planning on connecting my dual radiators at the front end of the case, so I decided to put these ra this top radiator as far forward as possible. I drilled and tapped two holes at the back of the case to screw the rad panel in from the bottom, and then I drilled and tapped the rad panel to take screws from the top. The holes at the top of the case do need to be widened, and you can just do this with a bigger drill bit or dremel it out slowly. Next, to be able to mount the radiator as far over to the side as possible, I'm gonna be using the 140 millimeter fan slots on the radiator panel. But the other end needs some divots cut into the panel to make it work. To make the top panel fit, I had to grind off a little bit of the plastic clasps. They still work, you just need to shorten them. Also, the front part of the panel has a few plastic prongs that need to be ground down. And that is how you get the top radiator to work. You will need to shorten some screws to get those slim fans to mount, and also the normal radiator panel screws that come with the radiator just too long for the thinner rad panel. So for mounting them to that panel, I would grind them down a little bit just to not damage the heat fins on the radiator. Now for the PSU shroud, I marked off the new location to bring the shroud down 10 millimeters and then I drilled out a couple of five millimeter holes next to each other, just filed off the, the middle of them to get a quick slot. I then drilled and tapped the shroud for the new mounting screws. Now in order to fit the XD3 DDC pump, I also marked off and dremeled out two spots where those screws would line up. And I did have to come up with some extra screws because those big thumb screws won't work because there's a PSU right there. Now there is one last thing, and whether or not the top radiator will work is very much dependent on your motherboard layout. I've only tried two, and the first one I tried was the Gigabyte Z490 ITX, and it has a RAM slot that is ever so slightly higher. And even with these mods, the fans interfered with the RAM a little bit. You can make it work, it's just super tight. The ASUS Strix X570 ITX has a lower RAM slot, so it's a really good fit. So I will be doing the demo build with this board. Now don't go with a board that has a tall VRM heatsink at the top since even if you push that radiator to the front, a tall VRM heatsink is not gonna allow the fan to work in that spot. I was pretty determined to make this work and it did take some surgical measurements, but here it is. And putting it together does require a little bit of planning. And I will at least do the pilot build with soft tubing just as a proof of concept in case I need to revise something. On the bottom, I am gonna be going with a cross-flow version of that same TX240, which makes a little bit more sense with the tubing run that I'm planning. 
Um, I haven't decided whether to go with slim fans or regular fans, but I threw these EK X3Ms in here just to get a look at the layout, and I think they actually look really good. Um, and stay tuned, I hope to loop it up soon, and feel free to check in with any questions you might have. I do think that will be the extent of the case modding though, so I am glad to get that out of the way successfully, and it looks like everything will work here. Since this will also be the last video for 2020, I also wanted to wish you all a happy new year, and thank you for your continued support. And I will look forward to sharing more fun stuff with you guys next year. If you haven't already, I'd appreciate it if you would click that subscribe button, and big thanks for watching today.